But within your Google account, click New Campaign on the top left hand side. Click New Campaign. And then if you click Sales, because shopping ads are focused on sales, then you need to select your conversion goal. Now this is set up in a separate part of the system and we'll discuss that in another video. But in this case, it is the account default, which is purchases and that is the conversion goal that we are tracking. If you want, if you're using a ROAS target, so you're basing your bidding on the value of the sales that you are making, then you need to set up your conversion tracking to track your purchase values. So there's two options here. So you can either click shopping or performance max. Now performance max is Google's highly automated shopping campaign settings. If we click on shopping, we'll see that we also have the opportunity to create a shopping performance max campaign. So we need to select the merchant center that we're going to advertise the products from. This is where Google pulls the product data from to create the ads. This needs to be set up separately. And we've discussed that in another video. We have a number of merchant centers here and I'm going to click the top one there. And then we have the option here of either a performance max Google shopping campaign or a standard shopping campaign. Now you can see if you clicked on performance max at the top, then you will be automatically selecting that performance max type of campaign. So I'm just going to click on shopping. Now the difference between performance max and standard shopping campaigns is the amount of control you have. Performance max campaigns allow you to access a broader range of advertising imagery on Google shopping. So alongside the Google shopping ads, it will also do remarketing ads and it'll also do text ads as well. It is highly automated. What you're really just doing is submitting a feed and choosing, a, uh, creating your ad groups, creating your audience signals, and then setting your advertising goals. You don't, you don't have any options for any kind of optimization other than location. You can choose obviously where you're advertising your products to. You can't choose negative keywords. You can't choose any kind of schedule. With a standard shopping campaign, you have much more control over targeting and you have much more control over bidding. In my experience, Performance Max campaigns work really, really well and they're much, much easier to set up. We're going to talk about setting up Performance Max campaigns and then standard shopping campaigns. You need to select a name. I'm going to call this Test PM for Performance Max. You need to create a budget for the amount you want to spend every day. Now, you should, when you're starting off a campaign, I'd recommend not making this too high because it could be that, that I find that Google will sometimes overspend in the first few days and you don't want it to rush to spend through all your budget. So I'm going to start off with 10 pounds a day. So that would be approximately three pounds a month. And we have a choice on, on what we want to focus on. So we can choose conversions or conversion value. So if we choose conversions, then it'll optimize for the number of, of conversions it gets within that budget. And you can set a cost per conversion. So you could, it's a target CPA. And it's recommending six pounds 30. So it'll try and optimize your bidding so that it achieves every sale cost you approximately six pounds 30. Or you can set a conversion value. So it'll optimize for conversion value. It'll try and get you as many as much dollar pound sales for your bidding. You can also set a target. So it allows you to set a ROAS target. That's return on advertising spend. And at the moment it's recommending 500%. So that's saying you're gonna sell, sell five times as much as you spend on advertising. So for every dollar you spend, you'll get $5 in revenue. And the next campaign setting is to location. So you need to select the, the, the location. Now I very much recommend against selecting all countries and territories because that will means you'll just advertise the whole world and you'll get loads and loads of clicks from, from parts of the world you're unlikely to sell to. So you need to select locations where you have a feed and have optimized your website for that location. So I'm going to click United Kingdom here and then select the, the language they speak in that location, which is English. If you click more settings at the bottom, you'll find a number of different options. So if you, if the first one here is ad schedule, you can define certain times of the day that you want your ads to run and not to run. So here I've got it selling for all days, but you could just have it on certain days of the week. That might be good if you have a, a certain offer or something which is um, only running for a certain period of time. Start and end dates, you can set start and end dates, and then you have uh, options to customize your URLs. I would generally recommend with the ad schedule, just leaving it to run all the time. Google in its in the background with its machine learning will be advertising and will be bidding at the best times and with the best amount, best bid amount for your products. I know sometimes it can be a bit disconcerting leaving it all to Google, but generally works best. For performance max accounts, then you can set asset groups. Now these are the assets which were used in your ad groups to advertise your products outside shopping ads. Asset groups are assigned to a listing group. Now a listing group is like a product group. It's a, it's a list of, it's a group of products which you could define by brand or you could define by um, category and you will assign your asset group to that listing group. So we're going to give it the name asset group one. 
we defined it here as this is an asset group which is being shared to all products but we could we could select a selection of products here so we're going to do by say brand there's list the brand i'm going to select the top brand there which is aiden and a so what that means is this asset group will only be shown for those products with that brand so let's quickly go through the information you need to submit on your asset group. The final URL comes from your merchant center. You can add to 20 images which are used in Google remarketing ads. So I've added a selection of images from our products. Logos, you can add to five logos. You can add videos if you have it. Here you can add information to create text ads. So I've just, you know, you can have up to five headlines, up to five long headlines, and you can have up to three descriptions. Your business name comes directly from Merchant Center. You can add site links, which are automatically generated by Google and a call to action. So I've here, I've just selected shop now. Under more asset types, you can add more ad options. So for example, if you've got a promotion you want to add to the ad, or if you want to have a, add a phone number, you can add this here. Since companies like Apple started focusing on the privacy of their users, companies like Facebook and Google haven't been able to track customers so well, and consequently, it takes their systems longer to learn about customer behavior. One way around this is to use an audience signal. Audience signals is information that the seller gives to Google to give more information about customers. So for example, you can give competitor sites, you can give customer data, which Google then match up with its databases, and it helps the system learn faster. Let's click on add an audience signal. I'm just going to look at an audience signal I've created previously. So this is one called AT audience. Let's just edit this. Within the audience signal, the information you can give to Google is divided up into several segments. The first is custom segments. Custom segments are customer segments which we've given to Google saying, Google, these are customers we think would be interested in our products. So we've created one here for competitor sites. That's a list of competitor sites, which I can now edit. Here, so we've got a list of competitor sites. This is in, intended for Austria, so they're Austrian sites. And we've also got a um, segment here which we've entered um, lists of interest of, of, of things that customers which we think people who are interested in these things will be interested in our products. You can upload your own data. So there's a number of things here. This is data which is collected from Google Ads. We've got data collected from Google Analytics and also a list of our, shop, our Shopify customers. So what we've done here is we've uploaded a list of our Shopify customers into Google and Google uses this information to help its algorithm learn. Finally, we have interests and demographics. Google has built-in interest groups and we need to, you need to add these into your system. It makes suggestions here so we can add, say, merchandise, baby products, baby clothing. And we're saying that these are things that the customers who are, who are interested in our products will be interested in. Finally, demographics. Here we can just add some demographic information. It's fairly broad, sex and age. You can also add as additional demographics. Well, unless you know an awful lot about your, your customers, it's going to be difficult to set these. Um, parental status, household income, all information to give to Google to help it learn gone through and set up all the, all the information successfully, you have the chance to review your campaign before it is then launched and you will then publish the campaign and it will appear in your campaign list. So under campaigns, we will be able to see our test campaign. We do filter for campaign name. And we say it contains test. There is our test performance max campaign. To create a standard shopping campaign, you need to go through the same process. Select your campaign type, i.e. shopping your merchant center, but then select standard shopping campaigns. You need to give it a name, so let's call it test standard shopping. You have different bidding types here. So with Performance Max, you can either use a CPA, that's a cost per acquisition, or a return on advertising spend bid strategy. Here you have a number of different options. You can do the target ROAS like with Performance Max, or you can choose maximize clicks, so that'll give you the most clicks for your money, or you can do manual CPC. So you just set a maximum CPC. So let's choose, choose manual CPC to be different. Here you have an option to enable enhanced CPC. What that means is you allow Google to overbid your maximum C your manual CPC maximum if it thinks that you are going to get a conversion. Under that, you can optimize conversions or optimize the conversion value. Set a daily budget, let's put in 10. You can have a campaign priority here, so you can have low, medium, or high priority. This enables you to advertise the same products in multiple campaigns, but have one campaign used over another. Here we have the option for which networks. So this you can choose whether or not to include do your search partners. Devices, your ads will show on all devices by default, so you can't change that. Again, you have to choose your location. 
I recommend not choosing all countries and territories. Start at end date, then you have add and you have to create an, an ad group to begin with. So creating a single ad group, ad group one, and then your maximum CPC bids. So I'm going to bid 20p. Once you've created, created your campaign, you may want to do some tweaking. I'm going to look at the product groups here. So you can you can select what products you want to appear in this campaign. Let's add a subdivision. So you can break down the, the, the campaign by different different types. So you can have you could break it down by category, brand, item ID, condition, item type, etc. So if we only want to advertise a particular brand, let's select brand, and I'm going to select my brand here, and then you can choose whether you want to edit the bid or not. Let's do save. So this one here, you have the it, it's broken up into these product groups. So we have a brand, and that's A and A, and then everything else. Now, if you wanted to only advertise Aiden and A, you'd want to exclude this other product group, which is everything else. So that means that campaign will only do Aiden and A products, and then you can also edit the bid at this stage. The other difference with standard shopping campaigns is you can add negative keywords. So we could here, if we decided that we didn't want this um, campaign to show for a particular other brand's keyword, so we could say muslins is another brand, then for it, no, it wouldn't show for those words, or we could do condition is used, or we could do review, and it'll exclude any searches which have those search terms in them. For standard shopping campaigns, you can look at the performance of audience segments, and as you get more data into the system, you could decide to bid differently for them. So if I add audience segments, we add them at the campaign level, it's a good idea to add them to begin with, select all, and do it as observation to begin with. So that means you can just see the performance of the different audience segments. And then maybe in future, if we see different performance and different audience segments, we can exclude them or we can change the bids. With devices, you can add a bid adjustment for different devices. So at the moment it's bidding the same for everything, but if we found that computers did better than mobile phones, we could add a bid adjustment. So we could increase it by say 20%. So that means that it would bid more on computers than it did on mobile phones and tablets. So in summary, standard shopping campaigns give the advertiser much more control over the targeting of their ads, but are much more difficult to set up. Overall, I found that the more automated campaigns give as good as, if not better, performance.